Thank you for organizing the, this nice conference. And I'm glad to be the first graduate student who gave the contributed talk here. So the, talk, uh, the topic of my talk is environment property and obstructions of property PQ. So the first part of the talk is concentrated on environment property here. And the second part is basically focused on obstructions of property PQ. So some quick notations and background. L2, L2, L2 0q uh, denotes the space of 0q forms with L2 integrable coefficient on a bounded C2 convex dom omega in Cn, and q is between 1 and n. And box q operator is defined to be d bar star d bar plus d bar d bar star. And d bar numeral operator nq is the bounded inverse of box q operator on the L2 forms. And uh, some background here is we um, Catlin introduced property P or property P1 uh, in his celebrated work working on those, proving that the sublative, uh, the sublative estimate on, on the zero convex domains. Basically, we define a compact subset K in CN has probably PQ if for any number M, usually is a large number, there exists an open neighborhood U of K and the C2 smooth function lambda on the neighborhood of U such that lambda is uniformly bounded by zero and one, the some kind of normalized condition. And the sum of any Q eigenvalues of the complex hessian of this lambda is at least M. So basically, if you take Q equal to one, that's just saying the minimum eigenvalue of this function is actually large. Oh, well, at least M. Well, M is usually a large number. And by cutting his work in 84, if omega is bounded smooth to the convex domain, if the boundary has property P1, then the Debar Numa operator M1 is compact on L2 forms. And basically, the theorem is still true when you put on to higher level forms. OK. And uh, by Sibonis' work, this probability PQ can be studied within the framework of Troquet theory. So basically, he start with a function family, PQ of k, and he uh, put this function family, PQ of k, into the Troquet theory and describe probability PQ. So let's start, uh, let's start with the definition of such function family, PQ. So you first take a neighborhood of the compact subset K, and now you define PQ of U. Are those, are those continuous functions on U such that this function is subharmonic on any intersection of E intersect with U where U is, uh, where E is any Q dimensional fine subspace. Basically, you take a Q dimensional subspace and cut through the, uh, the neighborhood, and F is subharmonic there. And, uh, PQ of k is just a closure in the continuous function of k of those functions which belongs to PQ of u. And of course, you can select u as you wish. And JQ of k is the Troquet boundary of k associated with PQ of k. So to say the Troquet boundary of some compact set are those points in this compact set k such that the only Q genes of measure is the mass point at this point. And now, Sibony showed that if you have a compact subset in CN, the following are equivalent, K has probably PQ if, if and only if PQ of K equal to C of K, and the Troquet boundary of K is equal to K, and negative modulus of C, C squared is in PQ of K. Basically, the PQ, those PQU functions can approximate any continuous function of K. Okay, so. Here's, a, here's our question to study the invariance property of probability PQ. Given a holomorphic mapping pi from CM to CN, and I assume that M is greater than or equal to N, and a compact subset K in CM here, let's assume the image set pi of K in CN has probability PQ. Does the original set K has probability PQ in CM or not? So there are several known results here for q equal to 1. Basically, by Sibonis' work, if you further assume that the fiber pi inverse of z has probably p1 in cn for any z in the image set pi of k, then the original set k has probably p1. There are some special cases here. So the first special case is m equal to m. Basically, the mapping is uh, mapping the same dimensional space. And Q equal to 1, if you consider pi to be a biholomorphic mappings, then there's no need to assume anything on the fiber. Basically, uh, you take a compact subset K and you map that image set K 
has probably PQ, then the original set automatically has probably PQ. So yeah. And the second special case is m less than m, q equal to 1. If you still consider those pi to be the trivial projection here, namely project of, let's say, project the first n coordinate. And then you also, uh, it's also not, you also don't have to assume anything on the fiber. Basically, if you assume the image set has probably PQ, uh, P1, then the original set will automatically has probably P1. OK. So our, uh, and there are more cases if you go into the higher level forms. Basically, AM equal, uh, the case here is AM equal to M greater than 1 and Q greater than 1. It's a known. Basically, if you come back to the case of Q equal to 1, those biholomorphic mappings, if you just look at those pi to be biholomorphic mappings, they're no longer necessary preserve this property PQ. Uh, basic no reason is it's not known. Those biholomorphic mappings are not known to be conformal in such case. And the third case here is m greater than n greater than 1 and q greater than 1. And the case is still unknown. And um, back to the previous slide, basically, if you just consider trivial projection under this case, it will not preserve PQ of k. So the difficult case in the higher level forms is that if you, con if you consider a function in a lower dimension, let's say f in, let's say we have a function f. Roughly speaking, if we assume the complex Hessian of f here is, say, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, it is in P2 of u. But if you consider the pullback of this, if you consider the pullback, f composed with pi, let's suppose that pi is a trivial projection. And then you can simply compute that the complex Hessian of this pullback, f composed with pi, is naturally adding zeros uh, on the original complex Hessian. It's no longer in P2 of u cross e. Basically, if you look at the sum of any two eigenvalues here in the complex Hessian matrix, the second diagonal items and the third diagonal, the sum of them is negative. So it's no longer positive. So it, then it's not in P2 u cross c. OK. So the main idea of my work is I try to find some holomorphic, uh, holomorphic mapping pi that really does the job. So then we can generalize Sibonis argument and result to the higher level forms. Basically, if the image set pi of k has a twisted property of pq nu, and we still assume that each fiber k intersects with pi inverse z has probably pq, then k has probably pq in cm. OK, let's, let me talk about what is this new probably pq is. Let's just, for simplicity, we have a short time. So I just present the case m equal to 3 and n equal to q equal to 2. So basically, this is our mapping pi from c3 to c2. It's defined to be z1 plus z2 plus gc3 and z1 plus z2 plus jc3. And g and j are holomorphic, ma uh, holomorphic functions with just one complex variables on the c3 complex plane with dg over dc3 equal to dj over dc3 on the projection set of k onto c3 plane. Uh, just a short comment, since um, Generically, g and j should be different by a constant if your k has, if the projection set of k under the C3 plane has accumulation points by one complex variables. But it really depends on your complex set k. If those projection set does not have any accumulation point, then g and j can be completely different. OK, so what is our P2 nu of u function is those C2 smooth functions such that the summation of all the entries in the Hermitian matrix of F are now negative on the neighborhood of U, on, on U, where U is a neighborhood of X. And we define in the same fashion on um, P2 nu of X, which is the closure of those P2 nu of U in CX. Okay? And we define the same fashion, the choke point boundary of x associated with the function family p2 nu of x. Basically, everything changed here is just a function family, and you keep the same definition in the uh, in others. OK. So the first proposition is a quite technical thing to overcome the difficult I have in the previous slide. Basically, if you have a function in a low dimension, and you take a pullback and the pullbacks are no longer necessary in the same in the in, in the new p2 functions basically what happened here by this 
technical precision is if you have pi this phi as above and you have a compact subset k in C3, and if you denote x as the image set pi of k, then if you take a function f in P2 nu of x, then the pullback f composed with pi is in P2 of k. So this overcome the difficulty uh, in the previous slides. Now our, our theorems is go as follows. Let pi kx define as above and assume the Chukwe boundary j2 of nu of x is x itself. That's an analogy to say uh, x has a kind of property p2 of nu. And for any point x in the image set of pi k, if you still assume that each fiber has probably p2 in C3, then the original compact set k has probably p2 in C3. So this generalized Sibelius result under this case. And the argument essentially follows the idea in the original proof. Basically, by this lemma, you can make it OK. All right, so the second part of my work is concentrated on obstructions to prop PQ. So basically, it's motivated by Sibelius characterization on property P1 on complex plane. We know that a compact subset on a complex plane has probably P1 if and only if k has empty phi interior. So the motivation is to generalize to higher dimension, higher level of forms. And short note, Sibelius result can be generalized verbatim to the case of q equal to n greater than 1. So basically, you just follow the proof. It's always true. Our result is, for the necessary part, when you assume the compact subset k has probably PQ, then, if you take any q dimension of fine subspace E, and you take the intersection with this compact set K, this intersection set will have empty fine interior with respect to the fine topology in CQ. So, if, basically, if you take q equal to 1 and n equal to 1, that's agree with the necessary part of Sibelius theorem. If you take q equal to m, and the same thing happened. OK, and uh, we naturally ask whether the converse of this theorem is true. Um, basically, I work with q equal to 1 for the sufficient part. So um, I work with those smooth bounded pseudo convex domain, and I denote k as those infinite points. Now, what happened here is I take a complex line, intersect with those projection map from Cn to Cn minus 1. Namely, I project those infinite points onto, the, onto this complex uh, under this complex line, if this intersection set has empty phi interior with respect to the fine topology in C, then the infinite point K has probably P1, and hence the boundary well has probably P1, since the boundary is just continual, uh, countable union of those set, compact set. Okay, so that's all. Thank you. No questions? Let's take our speaker again.